but he's doing it all over the world and they all look the same. So and people expect him to do that, his thing. And whereas we would, when we come to a different place, it really has to look different because we do it there and not here. And so the influences of these aspects, they, you would see that in, in, in the project immediately, hopefully. <laughs> what we want to do and, and then if you think in a, in a kind of in a conceptual starting point things become more easy to organize and say like, well what do we want to do here and then if you don't have that you might get lost into all kind of directions and the whole outcome is unclear so we yeah, describe ourselves sometimes like a conceptual art architect and, and that's not that, not that, that we only are interested in, in, in concepts but that it is part of the starting point of, of uh, and, and that, that you can always describe what you want to do in a very simple way. So some of these, of these projects, they have a very, yeah, they, they, they're very complicated, but they have a simple conceptual starting point, and we try to keep that as clear as possible throughout the design process. Yeah. Of the river. So it's a 70s neighborhood, uh, 70s city. So there was a, a tiny village with a, a few farms, and then they extended these housing areas, and it's full of yeah, unclear roads, and, and you get lost immediately. And there's an ugly center, and now they want to upgrade the center and give it a bit more, uh, a certain, give, give it back a certain, a certain, a certain character that, that, was, that was lost. And the, the character that was there was this village character, but the village was almost gone. And the municipality wanted a new library uh, in the times where people were going less and less to the, to the library. Uh, and also, but also, f they wanted to, to locate it right next to the old center of the town, where the market square, uh, the, 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 where the church was. And uh, so what we did was there, we, we made it, it turned it into a huge farm. The, the, the topology of the farm, which is this big barn, uh, and there's a couple of them still there. And it, was, and it matched exactly with the zoning law. So we could we make this giant house, basically. And uh, instead of making, uh, making rooms with books, we said, okay, we put all the bo books to the wall and then create some kind of uh, spiraling loop to the top where you could look over the over the city to the harbor because it's not so far from here but then on the, on the other side of the river and uh, just see how it looks. so here you see uh, on the basement on the, on, the, on, the, on the ground level there's some commercial spaces financing a bit of that, that so they, they were rent out for offices and shops so the main entrance is from the from the square of the of the church. Then you go up. Here's the re here's the reception, and from there on you can just move your way all the way to the top. Whereas all, and then all the books are as, as a kind of wallpaper uh, to this to this to the to the mountain. So we call it the book mountain. And so you can imagine that, that that there's different ways of putting a book. So you can you can go from A to Z to the top, and and you can find you can put the book on different location so you can put put it on the, the name of the title somewhere here and if the writer has, has a different letter it comes back to the writer if it's a French book it comes to the F if it's uh, if it, if it, whatever so, so you can always find it in a kind of easy easy way that's the idea we're working on right now and uh, yeah from here on inside there's there special rooms for uh, study and there's some little small auditorium some office spaces so all those all the rooms are in the mountain and the, and the library itself is one big open space but it's wooden uh, beams are um, in a way shading the interior, and, uh, but also some of the heat that's been, yeah, it was clad in glass, so we, we actually store the heat underground, and so it's distracted at the top, and it goes back all the way to the ground. In, in winter time, it comes back up again. So it is a very ecological building as well, uh, and uh, there were there were a lot of questions on how it would work with the light, but the life of a book is much shorter then it would uh, it deteriorate by the, by the ultra -V, UV lighting. So that was in the end no, no big deal. So, uh, but you can see the, the, the main structure is there now. And uh, yeah, it's exciting to uh, see it happen. And, and, and everybody seems to, seems to like it. It's, it's very recognizable. It's just a simple house, but a, a big one. And, uh, and, it has a, and it's an intriguing interior. So people probably, yeah, almost like an apartment store come up, there's a, maybe a bar here, a fireplace, uh, so to, it's a nice place to go. And we'll see what, maybe people start reading more in the spec and this. <laughs> um, yeah, we've been 
developing it for the last few years, and it's actually moving forward now. And uh, the idea is that we make, yeah, 3,000 apartments on a kind of a small plot near the city of Logroño. And the idea is as well that all these apartments, uh, all their energy would be would be gained on the location itself. And uh, well, in Spain, the, the where it's a bit better than Holland, so we could combine solar energy on the bottom near the, near, the, near the river and wind energy on the top of the hills. And together they, they match the uh, electricity need for, for these 3,000 apartments. And then uh, the heating is also being gained by, by using the heat exchanging from the groundwater. And so altogether it's Antarctic in energy, but at the same time it's also very it's built out of very simple buildings that, that can be built that you see anywhere in Spain. So, uh, and but the funny part as well is that all these 3,000 apartments they they get a share in the in the power company, let's say that that, we, that is being founded uh, for this neighborhood. So if they are smart with their energy use, they they have more energy left to sell to the net, and they gain twice. That's the that's the idea. For this as well, we expect we develop some simple solar trees with standard panels from the solar industry in Spain, and that can be applied on, on flat terrain, slope terrain, over parking, on top of a building. So you can really roll out roll out the, 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 the solar trees, the solar panels over the over the site. Yeah. It is what it is. A kind of a, a small model laboratory, and we do a lot of stuff that we throw away again and then we we'll take pictures but it, it, it is really important to do physical models and virtual virtual modeling in the computer so um, yeah otherwise you 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 cannot really understand what it really is about and uh, so a simple test you don't have to, it doesn't have to be too detailed together with uh, some more a bit more detailed computer model helps us to decide what is good and what is less good yeah, well, this is a neighborhood uh, developed by West Aid, and uh, it is uh, for Dutch standards a very high density, but also Amsterdam is a low-rise city, so they made an interesting starting point to make uh, a super dense carpet. Uh, but of course, by having the water there, you could do that. Huh? You don't feel kind of claustrophobic, and uh, so that carpet is then injected with a few big blocks, and there's one small street where where there could be uh, private houses being being developed. So, and, and we, in one of our, our houses, we wanted to express that idea of having a compact house in the city with a garden. And the original scheme of West 8 had this scheme of uh, we call it la, la melle, kind of an apartment and a garden, an apartment and a garden, tuck, tuck, tuck. And it turned into a row, ho row housing because it was too expensive to have so much facades. Because if you have an apartment and a garden, and it's quite long, you have a super amount of exterior facade. When you have a row house, you only have the front and the back, much cheaper. So that was not realistic again. But nevertheless, we tried to do that in, in one of them, one of these apartments, or one of these uh, uh, houses, to uh, have that principle again. So one part is empty, one, and one part is the house itself, but it's oriented to the garden. So it's, and it's a very n narrow plot of uh, four and a half meters. And uh, so basically, we, when you do that, you have a house of uh, two meter 20. Yeah. But our client was an artist and his wife, she was into uh, styling, fashion, and they wanted a concept. Okay, we asked you to develop a concept. And so we said, okay, no, you don't, have a, you don't have a narrow house, you have a very wide house. Your house is only 16 meters wide and only two meters deep because it's full of glass on one side and it's closed on the, on, on the street and on the back. And they didn't want to have any, any view or uh, nobody looking inside. So that was uh, perfectly for them. So, so it was a nice translation of the concept of West A, but also a, a, a hardcore concept. Um, and it, actually a funny house because you really feel oriented in the other direction, although the house itself is super narrow. Uh, you have always windows. That's funny. Yeah. So yeah, I started off. Uh, I tried to get into uh, the, the, the industrial design school in uh, in Delft. So, uh, but I was there was a kind of lottery system, and I got not selected by chance, and I went into architecture. So, it's, uh, I'm always interested in it. But on the other hand, I'm happy that I didn't didn't become a designer. 
<laughs> because I think architecture is uh, what I like about it, that, that, that it's so much more linked to the society. And uh, designers sometimes it can be almost too much in their, in their own world of materials and shapes and stuff. And uh, of course not everybody is like that, but I think the, 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 the impact of architecture is, inter is interesting, what it can do on the city and uh, the larger scale. So I, I like, but I like the, 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 the yeah. But I, I, we can also learn from the, the designers about their, their, um, their details and their and their obsession with materials and, um, uh, and, and yeah. So I think that, therefore we, we were definitely inspired by that, by that. And working together with them, it's also interesting how they look at things. So how different that is actually. And uh, so um, I'm not sure what what. If I can make a sensible answer out of it, but I think that that's, that's, that's it's, it's very fruitful to work together with people like Jurgen Bay or Richard Hutton uh, in our architecture work because they really add something different. So in the end, uh, we can do that as well. We can do some furniture. We can do it, but in the end, you, you you realize that they can do it better. So, but we can do other things better, and so that, that so therefore it's good to 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 collaborate with different disciplines uh, and have this bit of a cross. Fertilization, but on the other hand, uh, do what you're good at. And that, that's something that we also keep. And if there's some, we also do it with graphic designers or model makers and say, hey, they can do it better, but right? we don't we ask them. And then the result is actually sometimes really exciting that they, they look um, from a slightly different angle and give you something that, yeah, wow, this is intriguing. So that's, we, we really believe in this kind of collaboration, where sometimes designers are being branded so much as persons, unique. Geniuses. That's sometimes a bit annoying. <laughs> and architects, we are, maybe that will happen to architects as well in the future. But some architects are branded like that. But it's a bit more complicated. That with architects, because you have to work in the whole teams, and, and, and you're not much, so much labeled as the person is the brand. That's, that's not so strong with architects. Somebody like Bert Jan or Richard, they can really concentrate on on, on, on making and, and control. What, what they want to what I want to make and do, and uh, where we have to work in a kind of force field of all kind of different people with different ideas and intentions. Uh, so uh, clients, users, municipalities, politicians, uh, engineers. So it's a whole group uh, which you have to orchestrate sometimes, and sometimes you ha you know that you're not be able to control everything. So you can then say, okay, I'm going to focus on that aspect instead of trying to do it all and, 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 lo and lose everything. So uh, you learn that also as well by, 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 uh, yeah, by, by doing and, and the fact that we were not so experienced in the beginning when we, st we got a large commission, it actually helps to focus and to, to try out things that we, we were, uh, because we were in a way ignorant. And uh, this, this way, way of working we, we, we still try to maintain so that you can really ask questions that might be dumb but turn out to be, uh, yeah, you, you might get interesting answers on those, and which we, which we use again to bring the project further or to develop it in a certain direction. And uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. And it works also well together with partners from different countries, because we do a lot of work outside Holland. And then, yeah, building is so local as well. It means every country has its own tradition, regulations, uh, and knowing that is just too much. So, so we have sometimes people from these countries working in our office, helping bridging the, uh, bridging the gap, so to say, or bringing the project home. Uh, uh, and that works really, really interesting. So we work in Japan, we're with Japanese people in our office that went back to Japan and really understood what we wanted to do. So, they, so we had an easy communication up to the last detail. And, uh, yeah. And a lot of our work as well is that like, you don't have to know the theory to like it. So, so some, some, and then later on you might think, hey, then the idea, then, then the idea comes later on. So it should be understandable for like the user, uh, somebody passing by, and then or, but at the same time the idea could also be explained by by by, by somebody else, not the architect. So that's so the, the simplicity of, of, the, of the of the concept or the idea should. Is a good thing, and, uh, but it should and it should be almost like easy and natural and obvious. That's uh, that's the then 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 that those are the best ones I would say. Yeah. The fact that you have to work with a lot of people and then if your concept is communicative, yeah, so like 
this is why it is like that. And uh, so don't, don't have to ask it anymore. Everybody understands it. That, that that's communicative aspect is very important. So that everybody is kind of, even though it looks different, uh, it, it feels obvious or it is understandable. Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah. Explaining your, your, your projects, doing all kind of renderings and, and, and little movies. Uh, so architects, uh, yeah, there's a certain part of architects, yeah, focus their work on that that aspect, and, and also and there's other specialists focusing more on the, on, on the making of things. And then these two have to meet somewhere. And that's of course interesting. But, so it's complicated to, to, to cover everything. It's almost impossible to do everything good. We throughout the years we developed some kind of a balance between practice and, uh, and, and research and, and these two influence each other so um, yeah I think it's important that, that we that, 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 that you develop your ideas and, and develop new concepts and that um, as architects not just answer the question but also think about uh, also pose the question and um, so in our office we, we uh, yeah we have these, 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 these two things together although in the past years the research part is a bit it's, it's, hard. it's not, not equally balanced, but it's of course not recent. You have to, they don't fund it. Uh, these projects are sometimes hard to, to fund. So, uh, but on the other hand, normal, let's say, non research projects can also lead to, yeah, they, they, they kind of feed each other. So, for instance, the, the, the project I showed in, in Spain um, yeah, is, 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 is also linked to some of the, the research stuff we're doing on uh, making sustainable cities and uh, Antarctic neighborhoods that could maybe. Uh, feed itself and also have uh, gain energy. Uh, so, and I think then, then when you get asked to develop a neighborhood, these ideas they, they automatically come back and say, okay, let's try to, to do this here again. So, uh, and, and our, some of our work is then maybe can be seen as a, a built example of, of, of the ideas of the concepts that we develop. That's, uh, and I, I think that is, a, is an interesting match between doing straightforward work, but also try to. Uh, to have uh, in this in this um, build work, uh, yeah, somehow a test case, it's kind of an element of of of, uh, of, yeah, of a new development, a new idea that has been uh, yeah, has been explained that can be tested. That that say for us, although it's a normal project, we then also try to say, okay, what do we do for uh, making it more compact office, for instance, in the in the VPRO? It also comes back from the fact that we that we don't have that much land in Holland, so if you Make it more efficient and put a put a, a green park on the roof. You, you, it also is a statement of making more compact uh, developments. Well, that, that came up uh, during the the, the, um, the last few, few years. Actually, winning is leading this uh, this part, and um, it, it you we used to do this more or less in the office, and it also became more and more difficult to. To, uh, to make it viable, to make it uh, to balance this financially. So to concentrate on the on the research takes a lot of attention, a lot of um, yeah, basically a lot of hours, basically, which you cannot charge. So and there's less funds for these kind of things. Sometimes we do this special exhibitions, and then these exhibitions lead to a special project like we did for Pig City. And uh, it, it became more and more clear that it would be interesting to to have a body of uh, yeah thinkers and. Uh, yeah, in, 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 in the education field, and Delft is very close. We all, all study there, so there's now uh, some overlap here and there for certain projects that we do the design part, and then sometimes there's an additional student group developing uh, some backgrounds or studies. And, uh, one of the projects now following on that is a vertical village project, which is dealing with uh, yeah, living in, in the city in a kind of village-like way, so the community, but the an anonymity of the cities expanding very fast. How can you get that old neighborhood feeling again, uh, but then in a high-density, vertical way? Yeah. So this is one of the, of the topics we're dealing, we're, we're working on right now. Yeah. Of coincident, of course, the whole thing burned down. As you, know, you know, the architecture faculty, just at the moment that, that the whole that the, 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 the group would start, and the whole space was, was, was completely furnished. And then, it's kind of, uh, yeah, the whole thing so it had, to, had to be picked up again. But, but, but as well, this, oh, this new beginning offered some chances, and then yeah, we could be, we'd be able to, to make small 
research unit in the heart of the building. And, and there were, was not a real lecture hall because the building was not designed for as an architecture faculty. It was just an administrative building. So the, the, the Tribune is then more or less, yeah, the, the research group gave back this kind of giant Tribune where lectures can be held. So now when there's a big lecture, it's on the Tribune. And then there's a, it's in the heart of the building. Everybody can see it. You don't have to open the door. Oh, sorry. Uh, everybody can just pass by and say, hey, it looks interesting. I'm, I'm going to sit there and, and follow it. So it's less, it's much more open. And uh, that's, uh, that's exciting. It is a uh, special, special mission, so to say, uh, with a special, uh, yeah, a special attention from the president. And uh, but it was exciting that he wanted to us or architects to think about the future of uh, of the city, and uh, he wanted us as well to be uh, open-minded and uh, yeah, um, yeah, think out of the box, so to say. And he asked very different, very different offices. Uh, and every every office has a, has had their own focus point, but as we, we we were a little bit, yeah, we were close, but also also far away. We were, you can take the train to Paris here in three hours, and you are in the middle of Paris, uh, so it's easy for us to go there. But on the other hand, we have an outsider look. We, we we're not French, and, and French is very you know, different than Dutch, definitely. So um, our our way of working, we could test and implement on. on on Paris, and some of the ideas, yeah, they are part of our collective, uh, let's say, uh, vocabulary. Uh, and our basically, idea to making compact city uh, is, has has been maybe, uh, yeah, started up maybe in, in, uh, in working in Holland, where everything is already so much occupied, and there's uh, there's not much open space, and the cities are spreading out, and it's almost touching each other. So there's you cannot escape it anymore. Whereas, uh, yeah, it's interesting then to to look at city like Paris from that perspective. So we said, okay, let's not extend, but try to fill in um, the, the small pieces in between and try to optimize uh, the, the city itself. Uh, and, and for instance, one thing we were intrigued by, but it's also by our own experience, is that when you go from, from Holland to, to south of France, you have to go to, to Paris, but if you go by train, you come from one station, you have to go out to the metro, you go to the other station. There's no way going through, because no, why would we? We all, we all go, we all go to Paris, and that's where you have to be. So we said, why don't you make one central station in Paris, so you actually can move on. You don't have to get out of the train, through Paris, into the train again. So for them, what was, yeah, only, only somebody not from France could, could, could propose these kind of things. But that made them also think, okay, hmm, yeah. It's not so handy. You know, they have all the trains stopping in different stations because it used to be like that, that everything happened in Paris and then from there out the country was, was organized. Uh, whereas now, yeah, it's not, 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 not like that. Yeah. yeah, what I learned in school as well is that you had, you had to explain yourself why you were doing it. It couldn't be just beautiful. So this kind of mentality of uh, uh, yeah, uh, just the, if, if there's no reason, the, you, you you shouldn't do it. Yeah. So that that's that's still a bit in in in, uh, in our mentality. So we try to give reasons and understanding why uh, we, we we do something. And uh, this this can go can grow. Uh, it it can be f frustrating every now and then. But uh, it's it's, in, in, it's we try to be intelligent or to make make sensible proposals. And, and yeah, but at, at the same time being not preoccupied. Yeah. The issue, yeah, we, we developed a way of working uh, in the Netherlands, but it turned out that we could export that way. And it, it was a bit of a test, of course, because people thought we were rather Dutch. If you would work in Spain, can you keep up that? And then somehow it turned out that we could do that without uh, being uh, doing, trying to export your, your kind of Dutch attitude in a literal way, it was more the, the conceptual approach that made it possible to, to work in different cu different cultures. But at the same time, we, we always have, have a bit of a uh, you know, the, 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 the look of a, of curiosity is important. So you look around, what's what's really happening here? And as an as an outsider, you can look uh, like we did in Paris, or also like we're doing in, in, in China or Japan. You can see things that are normal for for the people there, but are actually could be improved or could be uh, could be an inspiration for your work. Uh, so that to, by looking at it from a different perspective, so that way of working 
turned out to be yeah, the way we, it, it, it's quite easy to do that. So it doesn't really matter where, where you do that, where you work. But then when, yeah, need, a lot of architects, they, they have a special style and they can basically do it all over the world. You know, like just, and people expect them to do that. And for us it's, uh, well, we try to, of course there are certain elements in our work that are recognizable, but we, have them, we try to do the opposite, that we look, that our work can have different uh, expressions and styles. It can, be, it can have pitch troops, it can be that. so that, it's, there's not a kind of pre-designed, pre-configured -pre element of well we have to use that material or so we, we sometimes describe it as the, that, the, that we are the anti calatravas so the calatrava has this beautiful craft this way of engineering bridges and all of but he's doing it all over the world and they all look the same so people expect him to do that as architects they have people were asking us uh, like yeah you have this dutch modernism uh, super dutch blah 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 uh, and it must be really exciting now in holland so, yeah. Nothing, nothing new, you know. It's just, just all the, the classicists are all, all there all, all the time. So there's so many things now happening next to each other, and only the f from a broadest, they only focused on a few offices that were doing into uh, different stuff. But at the same time, there was just a whole lot of regular stuff being built. So the, the, the only di difference was it was like instead of 99% uh, uh, normal stuff, it was now 98% normal stuff, and and that means and it was and there was more construction going on, so suddenly there was like five times more interesting stuff going on. Say, so, oh wow, this must be, which is basically still the, the, the minority by far. And right now you see a lot of traditional architecture um, yeah, being more and more popular, and so it's a whole different attitude. So where there's a lot of these offices, they all went out. The West 8, uh, OMA of course, with the UN Studio, KCRP, Netflix, they, they have more and more work outside, outside Holland, and that's why they survive on right now, actually, because there's much, much more. So when we do competition or selection in, in, the, in the Netherlands, there will be like 80 offices applying, we end up somewhere at number 40 or so. It's very hard to get, to get projects for us in Holland, whereas in France or in more, uh, uh, Denmark, we are much more, uh, uh, it was much more easy to get, to end up higher in, in the selection process. So they, they get invited for a competition. They make sometimes they choose five offices, and then everybody can send an application and say, well, and they, they check them all and give them points. That's very frustrating, because <laughs> here we it's very hard to get to get in, in into this top five.